Hey, it's Lisa Durden here with the L Spot. You were so amazing up there. You were yourself. Like, yes. I need you to, like, let people know, like, it's okay to be yourself. Right. Like, you were up there by yourself. People right. didn't show up. Like, you did your thing. I right. loved it. Right. You know, well, first of all, you know, when I was called to do this panel um, here at She Tech about TV and film and how to break in and some of the, the ups and downs, you know, like, I don't know how else to talk about it but to be myself. But the beautiful thing about it is a lot of people behind the scenes are not usually in front of the camera people. I did it the opposite. I didn't go to film school. I began as a journalist, a broadcast journalist. So I was in front of the camera for years and years and years. So I was a TV personality for a long time. So after a while, like, it's not like acting, right? Acting, you're playing in a role. Right, so right. you can see a great actress and they're good. I've interviewed actors and some of them can't even talk because they're being, it's hard to be yourself. You're being a character. Well, when you see a talk show host or you see a, not a news anchor, maybe a little bit more now, but a talk show host typically right. is themselves. I don't mean like an anchor person on the five o'clock news. I mean like the Oprah's and the Maury's on some level, even though they're saying it's your, your, you're the father. The way he presents that is still who he is. So he might, if you met him, be like that when you met him because it's not, it's, it's Maury Povich, like I'm on TV as Lisa Durden. So I think that for me, it's a perfect match that I produce content across multiple platforms. I do live content, like today's content, right? right. A live event. Um, so that that side of me comes out because it's just all content. So I think that when you're doing content, the best place to be when you're on camera talent and doing like production, they'll see a piece of Lisa in that at all times. My voice, today was literally in there, but my voice is literally in a production too, because that's who I am and it goes into everything. Sure. So today I'm like, you know, there's always gonna be somebody who doesn't like you, but I feel like this, when you are sitting at a, in a panel and you're being yourself, the most important thing is you connect with someone or that you're at least trying to connect honestly. If it doesn't connect, it wasn't meant to be. But I'm not going to shrink and put on airs. I mean, I have a degree from Seton Hall University in journalism. I can pull all the words out and, and run with these nice <laughs> words and pop with these nice words. And it's a, there's a time and place to do nice words when I'm writing a press release or something <laughs> like that. And I've got to send something out that's very direct and to the point. Right. But, you know, people don't realize this. When I went to school for journalism, they taught us that the newspaper is written on a seventh grade level, even the New York Times, because they want to reach the masses. If you're writing your, 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 your article on a level that you must have a degree to understand, you're going to miss a lot of people. Then are you trying to get your message across or are you trying to prove how smart you are? Hmm. So when I'm in anything, a panel, when I go on Fox, uh, Fox and Friends, when I go on Fox, uh, my new favorite friend, Megyn Kelly, my only Republican friend, when I go on the Megyn Kelly show or, or the Kelly Files, like I'm talking as a commentator on Fox. Now you see a lot of black pundits, oh, go, 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 go. like ain't nobody got time for that. So when I'm talking, I'm talking like this. You understand the words coming out of my mouth. I'm making the point. If it's something horrific and I'm talking about black men getting murdered by white cops, I'm talking the same way I talked on the panel. If I'm on CT style talking about Kim Kardashian's ass, I'm talking the same way as I'm talking now because I want to be understood. I want to reach the masses. I don't want to reach just a segment of the population who may have a degree. What's the point? We all know each other. I don't need to impart this on you. I want to get as many people as possible. It's called audience engagement, duh. So like I learned that, wait a minute, people watch me not because I'm on TV and I have a topic and a guest. Everybody who has a talk show has the same damn guest. Right. You ever watch a talk, like I watch them all. Nine o'clock I start out with Kelly, and it's who, I don't know who the host is this time, but it's just like live with Kelly. <laughs> yeah, live with Kelly, then I watch um, uh, I'll watch uh, Wendy Williams in the morning, then I'll watch The View, then I'll watch The, to then I'll watch, um, uh, the Talk. You don't watch The Real? Then I'll watch The Real. It comes okay. in at 4, rerun. I don't do 11 o'clock. Oh, don't? Don't, no, girl, that's The View. <laughs> okay. I can't, I gotta get the old ladies in at 11. Okay. Because they repeat at 4. Right, you're right. And they right. repeat again at 12 on BET <laughs> yeah. at 1 o'clock. So I can't do them in the original broadcast because <laughs> The View doesn't repeat. I can't play with y'all young girls until I'm drinking my tea at night at one o'clock in the morning. Then I can watch a little young girls talk and look at your outfits. So, and I've seen many times where I've looked at all those shows on the same day and they've remixed different guests, the same guests on different shows. I'm like, they were just on the thing earlier today. But it's not I'm watching to see five interviews with Lindsay Lohan. 
It's who's interviewing her that I'm looking at. How are they going to have this conversation? So it's the difference in the host that I'm looking for. So you drawing me in. So I just, I'm just myself. But it's hard because people make you feel not so good about yourself. I get talked about all the time. Why you always got something to say? You talk too much. You think you know everything. Do you ever shut up? These are all the things that have been said. No, I'm mouth on mighty tongue everlasting. Don't you wish you were? And don't you wish you got paid to talk? Well, I do. <laughs> Bye. If that's it. Um, how is important, how important do you think it is to be on many different platforms? Yes, I learned a lesson about being on multiple platforms. People say, you know, stick to one thing. No, don't be stupid with it. Don't be a dancer, a doctor, and a lawyer. They're not interrelated. So if you're a dancer, actress, singer, those are interrelated fields, right? So if your platforms overlap each other and your platforms f meet your brand and they're consistent, that's good. So like Oprah has... You know, she was in the talk show space, then she got into the production space, producing films and television content, and then the, the old magazine, and then she did, that's all messaging. You know, and then she did the book club. It's all a message. It's the same big thing as a talk show, only it's extensions of it. So that's how I began to look at my career. I was afraid to, like, do something different, just stick with the talk show, but I was kind of forced, I hate to say it, <laughs> this is one thing I learned from Donald Trump before we hated his guts. I loved him in the beginning, but when he ran for president, I'm like, Donald Trump, I've interviewed him before. I'm like, Donald Trump, boy, I was loving you, but I can't. We got to get a divorce. Before I hated his guts, um, I saw him on The View maybe three years ago or so, or so. He had written a book. He's written many, but one about, you know, like how to kind of be successful in your career. And he said something that was very interesting. He said, when I was coming, you know, getting into the real estate thing, his dad had a little money, but he didn't have as money, much money as he right, has. Right. He's built it bigger. He said, um, I wasn't afraid to kind of go in the direction where the journey took me. Just go where the journey takes you. He said, sometimes you're on a journey and it takes you where you're not trying to go. Go explore that. So I said, oh, yeah, because as, as he was talking, that's what was happening in my career at the time. I'm like, I don't want to do this right now. I need to do this, you know, but I keep going this, in a direction. I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I still here? So I began to not fight it. So even when I became a producer, I didn't, I didn't become a producer on Brick City to produce reality shows and documentaries and feature films. Initially, I began to produce, to put myself in it like, you know, Tyler Perry does. Right, right. But then I started producing other things that I wasn't in, and it was, the journey was taking me where I didn't want to go, and I just, had, when he said, I just stopped fighting it. So now I produce content that I'm in or not in. It's still my voice. So I don't have to physically be in it all the time. If something says, do this documentary, like this recent one I'm going to be doing together, going in, into pre-production now, I'm not going to be in it to, to some degree. It is what it does. I did a, 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 a competi cooking competition show called The Ultimate Soul Food Cook-Off. I love cooking shows. Oh, God, I'm still pitching it. I'm not in it. I'm nowhere in it. There's a host. It's not me. There's a, there's a bunch of judges. There, there are cooks. I'm not in it. And it's fine. It's still my voice because I'm a soul food cook. I know the topic. I'm an expert in the field. I cook. I was just not in that project because I, I was the director. So I wasn't, so I had to, so it morphs into whatever. And all of those things got me here. You know what's interesting? I didn't say this on the panel, but. Exclusively on the L spot. The yes. Yes, boom, she's good. <laughs> um, what got my TV appearances popping was not being a TV show host. Hmm. Meaning the other shows right, I go right. on as commentator. What got me the popping TV appearances was doing, was producing the documentary, Men on the Down Low, Project mm -hmm. Wow. When I did Project Wow as a producer and a director, and I got that interview with Michael Bazin, I got more interviews. That project got me on TV. My TV didn't get me on TV. I mean, I was on my own talk show, it was local. Right, right. But getting me on national TV, productions got me on national television. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So that's back to that journey, just follow yeah. where it goes. So all of that led me to being a commentator on Fox and Pix 11 News in the Morning and CT Style and all these networks because of my production value. And that's how I got to get into that trajectory of being a commentator on all these shows. So they are married in that way. So they do interconnect. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it became, it made, it's such a stupid thing. If you write a book and you have a documentary or a feature from you're an expert all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm the same Lisa Durton I always was. Because as a journalist, you research all the time. Mm -hmm. you're, you're always learning about something or someone. But until it's stamped by somebody saying, it's on BET. So B, I'm on BET with my film, and now all of a sudden I'm an expert. But I did it before it was on BET. It was already produced before they put it on. 
So until it's aired, I'm not, I'm not an expert. Okay, whatever. So that's just a real funny thing. People like to see what others feel as the standard of what is considered success. You know, so it is, you can't fight that. It is what it is. So what other projects can we look forward to to see you in, it, in the future? Well, actually, <laughs> My recent um, micro-budget project, I was a freelancer, I was the co-producer, I just wrapped this week on a project called Title VII, I mentioned it a little bit there. Title VII is a legislation that exists now that says you can't discriminate in the workplace, but we're turning it on its head, we're talking about same race discrimination. Mm. Black folks, you know what we do to each other. <laughs> Black on black discrimination, like why do we do this? So in working in this project, um, you've got to do what you got to do. So even though I'm the co-producer, I'm the chief cook and bottle washer because the show must go on. So I go to the set one day last week. I'm on set, looking crazy, hair sticking up in the air, digging in my teeth, snot coming out my nose, crust in my eyes. I'm there at 5 a.m. So the director of photography, Sabelle, and the director, Nicole, starts walking toward me with a smile on their face. And then Sabelle starts singing my name. Lisa, Lisa, I'm like, Sabelle don't act that happy because she's a serious DP, you know. So I'm like, uh. So she started rubbing my arm, Lisa, Lisa. I'm like, uh, do you want something? She said, come here. Girl, somebody stood us up. The character called Woman. Oh my God. That was my moment with makeup. So I had to be in my own film. So I'll be like a little role in there, you know, woman. But um, other than that, I'm the co-producer, so that should be, uh, I guess the edit will be done maybe October. So we're gonna do the, we're gonna do the um, festival circuit. We're gonna be doing um, a lot of live chats with people who are experts in the field of discrimination because even though it's a feature film and it's not real, it's about a real thing. So even before we went into production, we did interviews with people like lawyers talking about the legal aspects of that, we interviewed Jeff Gardier, you know, the, the, the therapist, Dr. Jeff Gardier, about the psychological aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And we did like a little live chat with, with those people and the director, and we did it on Facebook Live. So we did these things to build the audience even before we started producing right. it. Right. And we're gonna keep it going, this conversation going. So we're gonna do um, an interview with a, a guy that's an African-American history professor um, about the historical perspectives of why we abuse each other like right, this. Right. It makes sense. So this actually turned into a bigger conversation than a feature film. In fact, our digital content producer, Cyril Phipps, mm -hmm. she actually had the bright idea that because it's such a conversational project, to do a, um, like, a, what do you want to call it? A transmedia kind of project. So transmedia means you've got, let's say, something like a film, live, some kind of live element, and some kind of outreach. It's all meshing these things together. So we've got the live element, which is those live chats, mm -hmm. which is tied to the film. We've got the film, and we're going to do like a mini doc. So she, we did behind the scenes shoot, and there's going to be a little mini doc coming out of it, a real mini doc. So that's all a transmedia project. And then we're going to end up doing a tour, like a five city tour, where we're going to be having panels talking about, in town hall meeting format, this thing called same race discrimination. It's going to be huge. We've already got a lot of media, Shadow and Act, uh, IndieWire has done articles on us, like Urban World's um, vetting us for the, I hope we get in, but they want at least, they're in talks with us about um, bringing the work in as a work, uh, um, uh, a work in progress film. You know, it won't be a world for me because when we finish, right, but right. so, because it's a really, it's, it's a topic that needs to be discussed because black people don't want their dirty laundry out there. Yeah. We don't mind saying whites are hurting us or whites are killing us, but we don't want to say we're killing ourselves. We have to have that discussion as well. So if we're not going to say what we're doing to ourselves, then they're going to keep doing stuff to us. So we need to stop people from doing stuff to us too. We need to, at the same time, make sure that we're not also the abusers, who, who, the abused becoming the abusers.